All right, fam. I am a little in my feelings this morning. <clears throat> Today is pig processing day because we cannot let these girls be an issue. So, raising pigs for us here is definitely a no-go. The bigger they get, the more destructive and messy they are. Now, it's been raining like crazy. <laughs> of course, Applewood got to pee. It's been raining like crazy, but, um, you know, I don't want this to be a nuisance to anyone. We can smell them when we come outside. So, time to process them. They are uh, four months old now. Yeah, they are a whole lot smaller than what we wanted them to be, but it's okay. It's not a loss. We've had the experience of raising pigs for a couple months. Um, now we're going to have the experience of butchering them out because, you know, we want to stay respectful and, and do what we got to do. So I just wanted to come say goodbye to my girls. Y'all can pray with me. Hey, girls. I don't want to get in because y'all be doing too much. Yeah. Say, what's up, girl? What do you want? What do you want? What are you doing? What's up? Bacon? And Applewood. I love you girls. I do. I love you girls. Look at you. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Yeah. So, I'm going to pray for my girls, you know, before it's time to be put down. Excuse me. Excuse me. Move back. And, um, yeah, y'all. So, let's pray this process goes well. And I'm going to go back in the house while my husband do what he got to do. Move back, Applewood. And leave my... Look. Don't bite my shoe. I need those. See, it was nice knowing y'all, you two. But we served our purpose, and it's time to move on. But it's a mess back here. Soyo brothers, Soyo sisters. Today we are here at the pig pen, and unfortunately, today is going to be that bad day for our girls. All right, as y'all know, this is my very first time uh, processing or raising pigs. I'll be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about how this process gonna go. Okay, so I know I need to put the girls down. I know it's a certain way I got to do it. And if I don't do it correctly, it's not going to work and it's going to cause them pain. That is my main concern. All right, so now uh, I am going to go in and pick which one is going to go first. Now, the, the object today is to do both, get them chilled and maybe you know, finish them up tomorrow. But I don't know how the first one gonna go, so we gonna have to see. So, here we go. All right, guys, so, the objective for putting it down was successful, and I was relieved because, well, I stressed about it a little bit. I know there's a technique to it, and I had to make sure it was followed correctly so that they didn't suffer. So I moved her over to the location where I was going to complete the processor. And my objective here was mainly just to uh, reveal the tendon that was behind the leg so I could hang her and complete the job. Being that it was my very first time, I wanted to make sure I didn't cut the tendon which would have made it impossible for me to hang her. So, 
This is what we're doing right now. All right, fam. So let me tell you a little bit about this setup. All right, because we had to do this and very short notice, I had to come up with a way to make a processing station. So fortunately for us, there was a local business that was giving away pallets. The pallets were made with four by four poles. So all I had to do was go and get them, which they were really heavy, as you can imagine, four by fours. Um, I had to take them apart, which they were put together pretty well with some pretty big screws. Uh, I wedged them in between a couple of trees and put uh, a four by four board on top. We used uh, tie scraps. Well, let's say winch scraps as uh, a method to hang them. So each one of them had hooks on the ends and we put them in the tendons to hold the pig while we did what we had to do. Here, me and Sherry both got together and we skinned the girls. So it was what we thought would be the easiest way to do it. We didn't have to get a, a station where we had to ball them. And of course, the first one, you know, it took a little bit of time because, you know, we were being careful because this was our first time and we want to make sure we didn't butcher up stuff. So together we both got it done. You know, the first one took a little bit of time, which wasn't bad at all. But, you know, and the second one went a lot faster. So, you know, this is a little bit of the process that we had to go through. All right, guys, a little bit about this process um, of skinning from, you know, a beginner, a new uh, process of pigs, you know, point of view. Uh, it is not a bad process. You know, um, I left a good bit of this part in just to give, you know, movies a uh, uh, accurate depiction of what you would be going through if you were to skin your pig. So, um, of course, we were extremely careful because we didn't want to damage the meat. This was one of the main things, which is the main thing to, you know, in raising them is to be able to harvest them and be able to put some meat in the freezer for me and my wife. So, we didn't want to hack it up too bad. So we took our time. It took us approximately 30 minutes to an hour to for the whole skinning process. And that's non-stop. Alright, so I'm sure it can be done a lot quicker with experienced people. But this is us our very first time and and being careful.
guys. So we got her skin now and the head cut off and now we're about to remove the intestines. This here gotta be really careful not to <laughs> damage the proper hole in the intestines. So I'm gonna take my time, see if I can avoid doing that. All right, fam. So I did not show too much of this process, but one thing I did notice that, you know, I probably was not aware of is how thin the, the stomach was from the intestines. So you have to be really careful doing this process. This is very easy to uh, puncture some of the innards. So guys, I was able to purchase some bone saw blades for my electric or reciprocate install. I'm sure it made things a lot simpler. <laughs> of course, I never tried the hand saw, so, but I can only imagine that this was a lot easier. And we also purchased the bone saws, uh, hand saws. So, you know, these were some of the things that we felt we needed to get the job done. And here, so far, so good. And so we went ahead and got things split in two. And I decided I needed to go ahead and rinse some of the bone dust off of the meat. So we are back with the next part of us processing our pigs, all right? So we got them processed yesterday, and now we gonna break them down. This is my first time. So I am reading the book, <laughs> trying to make sure I get the proper cuts and do it the right way, all right? So it's not mandatory that everything come out perfect because this is just for us. We gonna consume it one way or the other, but I would like to get this technique, this uh, skill down pat. So in the future, I know I can do it. So here we go. All right, guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attempt to remove whatever tenderloin that we have. should be able to just pull it out.
that wasn't the best job, but it's done. Now, the next instruction I got was to remove the rear cam from the first, between the first and second vertebrae. So we don't have a lot, but we do have some leaf lard. So remove that real quick. And then I'm gonna continue on with my curl. much as I can with the knife. Put a burn the saws in. So fam, according to the book, I need to cut between the fourth and fifth rib. So I'm counting out one, two, three, four. And we got the fifth one there. And just cut through that. And that's to remove the front shoulder.
All right, guys. So the next thing we want to do is go ahead and separate the shoulder. Well, split the shoulder. So from what the book says, I just go parallel from the top of the first rib straight across. So here we go. So all you want to do is cut through the bone with your saw, use your knife. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to separate uh, the belly and the ribs. So, according to the instructions, I just need to cut straight across. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark. Trying to put too much muscle into something that don't require a lot of muscle, it's not a good thing. So. Look, I got a pretty straight line. Here we go, guys. That is the belly and the very small ribs. <laughs> okay, so guys, if you're not aware, these uh, pigs were supposed to be processed in January. They were supposed to be every bit of 300 pounds. We ended up processing them maybe at one. 25, 150-ish. So they didn't get to uh, the maximum potential, but they needed to go. And we decided to go ahead and do this process early. Uh, we definitely wanted to get this, um, this skill down and we wanted to get some meat. So we went ahead and quickly decided to uh, do what we're doing. So we're bringing y'all along with us. And this is where we at. So let's continue on. All right guys, so what we wanna do now is remove what ribs we have from the belly. 
Okay. As you can see, there's not a lot there as far as um, extra meat. But Alright guys, so these are our ribs. Put on my clean some bread. Yeah, this is our belly. So Little bit of bacon. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna try this is the front shoulder. I'm go ahead and remove Feather bones. Okay. Not much meat left on that, but All right, fam, so I finally got done with one side of one of our pigs. <laughs> now, it took me a minute because I wanted to make sure I was doing this right. All right, so I'm reading the book and actually doing cuts at the same time. Of course, I watched a lot of videos, so to all the YouTube content creators, that actually put out videos, I appreciate it. Gave me a really good idea of what I'm supposed to be doing. But, you know, just to be uh, sure, I read the book. So I'm not gonna pretend to know exactly what all these cuts are called, but I know these are pork chop, bone in. I do have some boneless chops here. Yeah, this was the first cut I made. It's Kind of jacked up. <laughs> All right, so we have the belly here. So I'm sure my wife will try to make a little bit of bacon out of that. Yeah. Uh, we have the spare rib over here. You know, um, not very big, but it is big enough, decent. I did the bone, the ham, and the front leg quarter <laughs> whatever you want to call it so those are boneless and ready to do what they do so i still have three sides to go so far i mean it's a decent amount of meat you know probably better than i thought it would be but not as much as it could have been but we're gonna continue on and uh see what we get hopefully i'll be faster the next time since I have a general idea of what I'm doing now. So fam, I can't tell you how long I've been waiting to experience this, to get this technique, this skill. You know, I always been fascinated by, you know, the guys who process our meats you know I'm always wanting to know where our food come from and how it gets you know from the farm to the, to the store and I love the fact that I was able to raise some meat know exactly what's in it how it was treated and was able to 
process it out and put it in the freezer. I'm going to say one of the processes I did not show is how to humanely put your animal down. I suggest you do a lot of research and make sure you can properly do that. All right, It is a technique to it. So make sure you learn how to do it if you decide you're going to go this route, guys. So. All right, guys, so it was certain aspects of this process that was not able to be shown or I felt maybe inappropriate. Um, other than that, we tried to give you a real outlook on the process. Right, I didn't want to zoom through too much because I didn't want anybody who was doing this for the first time to think that it should happen in no time. I want to show the slow, methodical way I did cuts, even the failures in the way I did cuts. You know, the sawing of the meat is not something that you're supposed to do. You're supposed to just cut right on through. Um, if I was to give a tip, you know, um, make sure you have a sturdy, stable uh, platform when you're processing because trying to saw bone on a surface or a table that will move with you it's not the easiest thing can it be done yes you saw it being done it can be done but to make it a lot easier have a sturdier um, platform that won't move as you do the sawing process here you see my wife is packaging up everything for us to put in the freezer. One thing I did not show is the humongous amount of extra meat that we have for sausage. So we will be making sausage with the extra meat that we have left over. Had a huge container full of it. So I'm not sure exactly how much sausage that will make. But I am interested to see. So that's about it, guys. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. I hope this video helps someone out. And to the next time, guys. Peace.